we, we could be in Paris, but we're the lucky ones. We're under the grey skies of London. But uh, to tell us a few words about Paris, I'm going to ask Pete Dean uh, to come up and uh, uh, have a chat. Some of the challenges that Paris gives us, Pete. So if you'd like to come up now, that would be uh, just great. Thank you, John. Um, I'd just like to say a few words about um, what we are likely to be able to expect from um, this uh, agreement that's been hailed as a historic breakthrough in the media and by um, the participants, um, particularly Ban Ki-moon, Lauren Fabius and um, uh, Francois Hollande. Um, there's a, there's, there's a, it has to go back to be ratified by the national government, which is um, where the crux of the matter is going to be. Also, we don't know yet what is in the detail, um, and to uh, uh, palm off the cliché, the devil is going to be in the detail. But we do know that there will be a lot of very uh, familiar um, terms in the detail. Um, that will be uh, carbon trading, that will be um, such uh, clean uh, uh, um, what's it called? Um, Clean development mechanisms, thank you, Helena. <laughs> Clean development mechanisms such as RED, uh, R E D D plus, which is uh, reduced emissions from um, degradation and deforestation. Um, there will also be uh, BEX, V E double C S, which is bioenergy with carbon capture and storage. Um, a lot of these are very, very familiar to us, and a lot of these are manifestly failures and harmful to humanity and harmful to the planet. Um, for example, RES is responsible for um, uh, mass evictions in places like Kenya and Tanzania, where um, to offset carbon, um, companies in Europe are buying land that is actually inhabited by people, inhabited by creatures, and um, the people have been driven off the land who have been living there sustainably for millennia. Um, so um, it's noticeable that um, human rights have been excised from the draft document in Paris. That is an absolute disgrace, and that is a triumph by the corporate lobbyists who were the major participants in the um, debates that uh, brought about this. A very, very bogus deal. James Hansen, um, the pioneer of climate change um, uh, research, has called it an immense fraud on humanity. Um, this is a shame, but we knew this was going to happen, and this is why we're going to be making our symbolic red line on Westminster Bridge right now. Um, I don't know if you saw these statements made on the news today. Um, it was Laurent Fabius who said that we must not concentrate on the red lines. Uh, why? He says we should be concentrating on green lines. What the flip are green lines? <laughs> this is just more hogwash. Um, the red lines are important. They must not be crossed. One of which has been cited as 1.2 degrees Celsius temperature rise. Um, which um, is disastrous for much of humanity. It will mean billions will be starving. It will be, mean, mean hundreds of millions will be made homeless and countries will disappear under the waves. Um, 1.5 de um, degrees uh, is, is not um, uh, 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 sustainable for humanity and will probably lead to um, tipping point events that, that will accelerate, such as methane is the release, that will, will, will um, accelerate the descent into um, the... Uh, temperature nightmare that we face. Um, one of my colleagues, um, Almuth from Biofuel Watch, said um, in echo of the climate camp banner that said nature does not do bailouts, um, she said to me the other day, um, you're not sitting down with nature on the other side of the table cutting a deal. You can't cut a deal with nature. We must cease our emissions. That is the only thing that will work in climate change. Um, and sadly, uh, talking about um, negotiating reductions every five years, uh, talking about a hundred billion pounds every five years. If, I, if the hundred billion pounds is going to Bill Gates' plan for industrialized agriculture under Monsanto in Africa, then, you know, Bill Gates and Monsanto and the new alliance for food security in Africa, which is uh, hailed by Ban Ki-moon, will hasten us to destruction also. So we have to, uh, we have to maintain our vigilance. Um, I, I would not be disheartened that there are so few of us here today compared with the two marches that we've had earlier this year because our friends are in Paris. And I've just received a text from Claire from Campaign Against Climate Change saying the thousands are sitting on the bridge leading up to the Eiffel Tower in an action of civil disobedience. Oh, yeah. um, they are not tolerating the police's uh, last minute. The Prefecture of Paris allowed them to 
to, to assemble at the Eiffel Tower. That was very, very generous of him. Allowed climate campaigners to make their voice heard at the very last day after the deal has been sent off to governments when um, the Prefecture de Paris has made a promise that rock concerts, sporting events and festive markets will be continued and not bow down to terrorism. Terrorism that uh, we have seen has uh, meant that uh, climate activists in social centres across Paris have been raided and arrested. Um, so let's, um, I, I think, I, I, uh, Linda from TTIP, Stop TTIP has come along. Um, so before we do our uh, action on Westminster Bridge with our um, symbolic red line, um, I, I, I think we'd uh, have Linda just say a few words about the implications for TTIP. Thank you. Thank you very much. If, uh, if Linda would like to come up.